Let's do a little tutorial here for Photoshop about how to correct photos that are maybe blown out, do some color correction. And uh, what I've done, I've got a bunch of photos here that I shot up in the Linville Gorge. And you can see, like, here's a very dramatic photo. I might go back to that other one, too, that had the guy in it. But here's a very dramatic photo that the sky looks is totally washed out in. My colors don't look good here. Believe me, that is not how it looked the day I was there. This is looking over at the... Uh, uh, west side of the wall back over toward uh, Wiseman's view is going to be back up on this side even farther but here we are it's a very dramatic photo but the color tone is not bad I did not shoot it in camera raw really would have been a much better image if I'd done that I could have done stuff with it I, I was this is back in the days I sh was shooting with old Sony Alpha 700 and it was not the you know the worst camera I really like that camera I like my Nikon's a lot better now but let's look at what we could do to improve this picture so I'm going to just double click on this. I'm in Adobe Bridge right now, which is really good to you know, be able to peruse your photos and everything. I would highly recommend you use Bridge just to catalog your photos and to, you know, to guide yourself through what's good and what's bad. And it's really helpful in culling them out too. But I'm going to double click here on this image. We're going to open up Adobe Photoshop CC. And we're right off the bat going to see what's really wrong with this. Now this, I like this darkness and all in here. And I really just wish I had blue sky up in here. And I wish this was nice and lively over here. Now, I could have done some things if I'd shot in camera raw, but I didn't. I could have done some things before I came in here to really improve that. What I'm going to do right off the bat, though, I'm going to take, this is, my, this is my background layer, right? The one layer that's there. I'm going to pull this down onto the little copy button down here, right beside the trash. See, it's going to make me a background copy. So what I'm going to do... I think is I'm going to work on this top layer. So I've got this top layer. If I if I turn this off, you know, it's, they're both the same layer right now. They're identical. But I've got the back the background layer underneath, and, the, and then I've got the layer on top. Well, this one I'm going to darken. Go to Image, Adjust Brightness Contrast, and I'm going to take the brightness down to a point where I'm starting to see some stuff in the sky. Maybe a little uh, less contrast even too. There we go. Now I've at least got some uh, color in the sky. Now to me this looks a little bit uh, unnatural there. I'll go ahead and deal with this later where we've got this kind of almost too dark blue up here. But at least now I've got a sky and I've also got some background back here. Now I might even make a third layer of this. So I'm going to go here and copy that one again. And this one I'm going to do to more or less work on saturation over in here. So I'm going to turn the uh, top layer off for a second. I'm going to have this bottom, this second layer that I'm going to work on this area right here. And I'm going to say image adjust. Uh, I'm going to go into hue saturation, I think, to do this. Now I'm going to mess the sky up a little bit. I'm going to, I, don't want to, I don't want to go to where, it's, to where it looks artificial. I'm going to go there. Uh, and that's, I'm already seeing some good color in here. And I'm going to say... Uh, image adjust brightness contrast again I'm gonna add just a little more contrast to that okay now I've totally blown the sky out net but I've got three layers I'm gonna turn sky layer back on right now I'm gonna click on the sky layer which is this sky, this top topmost one here I'm gonna go get the eraser tool now I know this is not the purest way to do this but it's a way that has served me well over the years. So now I have a, a, a brush that is that size. Let's make this brush about 600 pixels. 550 pixels. 550. Enter. Now I've got a much bigger bigger erase tool here. My opacity is at 100%. That's probably going to be right. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of erase off the, the, the parts here that have the sky. Now this, I'm on the sky layer. I'm leaving the blue sky, right? So if I turn both these off right now in the background, you see what I've got. So I've actually got this part here. Uh-oh, let's turn our sky back on. I've got this part that does that. Now, and you know, probably I don't want to have this uh, color tone that I've used on the sky over this part right here. So I'm going to go ahead and actually erase this off as well. I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong layer here. Well, let's, let's, let's erase this off first. Okay. So what I've done now, let's go to this layer as well and do the same thing. Now I'm starting to see all my tones and colors that are over here in the foreground as well, right? So now what I've got, if I turn these layers off, I've got the original layer 
I've got the layer that kind of highlights everything in here, and I've got this layer here that gives me some more sky tone and everything. So I'm going to just kind of check and look here what I've done, what some things I can clean up. I'm on this layer still. Probably don't need to do any of this. Okay, and I can see that my sky layer still has some stuff in it, so let's go ahead and get rid of that. So now I've basically just got, I'll turn this bottom layer on, just this foreground stuff here. Now I'm going to go in here, I'm going to work a little bit on it. I'm going to say image, adjust. Uh, let's do brightness and contrast on this. Let's just do contrast and contrast it up a little. I can brighten it just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to make it look artificial. I'm going to say image, adjust. And let's go this time instead of to uh, hue saturation, let's go to vibrance. I'm going to move the saturation just a little bit. I'm going to hit my vibrance just a little. Okay. I'm going to say okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and flatten this image. So I'm going to go here. Uh, it's going to be your button where you're going to do that. Right, this, right here we got the little, just a tiny little, um, it's hard to tell what that even is there, but it looks like a little just a set of lines. You click on that and you do the flatten image. So now I've got an image that I kind of dig, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe even do a, a, just a little auto tone and see what happens. I don't, I don't know if I liked what auto tone did. I'm gonna do Control Z to undo. Let me do an image auto contrast. Now that just barely changed the contrast just a little bit, but it sort of smoothed everything out. So I'm looking. Is there anything else I think I need for this image? I really don't think so. I'm gonna do File Save As. Now, like I say, ideally. We shot this in camera raw. I'm going to put a little E after this. I'm going to do uh, this is 3422. We'll call it 3224E for edited. I just I just title my things that way. Easier for me to remember. And we'll save as a level 12 JPEG. Let's do a little uh, before after comparison list. I'm going to do a Control Zero so it kind of fills the screen up. So let's open 3422. So here's our starting image. Let's do a control zero on that. Here's what we started with. Here's what we end with. Start, end, before, after. And I messed up down here, didn't I? I didn't realize that I had uh, had erased part of that out. So you know what? Let's do. Let's fix that right quick. That that's. It's too bad that I did that. But let's go ahead and just take the. Uh, so uh, you know, there's times when the clone tool really probably is the best tool to use for something like this. So I'm going to take the clone stamp tool. I'm going to go up in size about 70, 80 pixels, maybe a little bit more than that. Got about 100 pixels now. And I'm going to sample by hitting Alt there. And I'm just going to kind of paste over some of this. And that was beautiful red tree there. So I don't think that we're suspending reality too much here. Let's just go ahead and take bits and pieces of that. That's my fault for messing that up. So there we go, we've largely fixed that little problem right there. I don't think hardly anybody would notice that I've got a little bit of inconsistency right there, those leaves. And what we might do, might take just a little bit more here and darken that, there we go. So there's my image uh, before, again, and after. I could have cloned actually from here and gone back over there, but anyway, this gives you the idea of what you can do. Color correction, if you've, um, not saved in camera raw now there are some things we could have done to brought that sky into play now up here i did say earlier that i probably ought to go in and fix that so let's go in that just looks a little fake up in here and i'm guessing probably the best way to do that's going to be your dodge burn uh type situation here let's take the dodge tool we're working mid-tones exposure 50 and let's take a little bit out of that up here in the sky I'm probably doing maybe even a little too, a little more than I ought to do. But at least we don't have that weird purplishness now that kind of, was kind of hanging up in there. If I go back to zero, we don't even notice that very much. I could have done it in more subtle fashion, I guess. But there we go. Fairly nice looking photo of the Linville Gorge. The main thing we wanted to be able to see was this out of the shadows. Everything just livened up, and the you know the the Sony Alpha 700 I did I shot in full auto mode, um, uh, and I'll tell you you can get some great pictures 
Uh, I, I know most phot photography purists would say, oh, let's set up, let's make sure exposure just right, let's use our light meter, all these various things. If I had shot this in camera raw, a whole lot of that would not have mattered. I just went out, was going crazy, point and shoot in full auto mode. So what you end up getting a lot of times are photos that are just washed out like this. Um, uh, again, what's awesome, if you shoot in camera raw, you'll be able to go and change these exposure things you've done wrong, and that whole sky issue would have been much easier to fix. The shadows, highlights would have sort of fixed, and, and the black adjustments and things would have fixed this color, these color problems that I had right in here, and I could have made this much more vibrant in just one or two simple steps. But if you've not shot, you're just trying to repair a JPEG and try to get satisfying color. I've done this sort of thing before, and the photo work has ended up in calendars uh, that have been widely published. So you can go and, and make something that's kind of a dog picture look really kind of nice just by doing these, this layer sort of approach. And, and it's not a whole lot dissimilar to what a... a uh, a uh, photographer would have done in the old days dodging and burning uh, in a dark room those of you've been around and still have done some dark room time i'm that old now that i can still remember that so hopefully this helped folks let me know if you have any questions um, let me know what you think maybe there's a better way a better technique that you have for doing this sort of thing but this works for me it works very fast uh, if i had not done all this commentary i could have had this photo done in five to six minutes uh, happy photo uh, shooting and editing uh, subscribe to my channel if you like. Thanks. Bye-bye.